bits, binary, Boolean logic, and computers. In this video we're going to try to explain to you how a computer works. So by the end of the video you should know what a transistor is, you should understand basic Boolean algebra, you should be able to do basic binary arithmetic, you should know what a transistor is, and you should have a sense for how transistors are used to create logic gates and how logic gates are used to create computers. And all of that together should allow you to understand how from the moment you flip the switch and electricity flows through the power cord and into your machine, uh, you should be able to understand what's happening, what makes that magic happen when you're you know, doing email or playing a game or listening to a song. Computers are electronic. That means that electrons flow through conductors and you understand what conductors are by now, I hope. Useful functionality, therefore, is produced by controlling the flow of electrons through the conductors, controlling how they go through the machine. A transistor is a device that controls electron flow. Therefore, uh, a semi and a sem semiconductor chip has millions of transistors. Um, just for your information, as of 2006, the threshold of 1 billion transistors on a single computer chip or CPU has been broken. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about a transistor. This is arguably the single most important invention of the 20th century. Uh, there's a picture of a transistor here on the right. This is obviously not the kind of which they put billions on a chip, but it you know, gives you the basic idea. Uh, the core component underlying the computer uh, is transistor, and really most other modern electronic devices are built using transistors. So what is it? A transistor, in simple terms, is an electronic device that is capable of implementing the basic operations involved in Boolean algebra. So what is Boolean algebra, you say? Uh, the simplest Boolean algebra has two elements, 0 and 1, uh, also referred to as true and false, uh, positive and negative. Uh, it also has two binary operators. A binary operator is an operator that requires two inputs and yields a single output. So you have to have you know, A and B uh, yielding some result, or A or B yielding some result. So two inputs, one output for the binary operators. And it all, Boolean algebra also has a single unary operator. Uh, the operator is not. And I'm going to tell you what those do now. So these operators are defined by basic rules. First, we'll look at the AND operator. The AND operator requires two inputs. Those are represented in the A column and B column, the first two columns in this table. And the output, a single output, is represented by uh, A and B in the third column. Um, in English, we would might say that uh, the AND operation results in a positive or one result if and only if both A and B uh, are positive. So you can see in the table uh, if A is 0, B is 0, then the result is 0. If A is 1 and B is 0, then the result is 0. If A is 0 and B is 1, the result is 0. Uh, the result is 1 if and only if A and B is uh, positive. And that's why they call it the AND operator. Um, likewise, the OR operator res uh, results in a positive result um, when either one a or B, right? A or B, one or the other of the inputs is positive. Um, in the case of A and B, um, that fits with A or B. So A is true or B is true, yields in a true result for the OR operator. And the unary operator, the NOT operator, basically has a single input and a single output. And the output is the opposite of the input. This is also called uh, an inversion or inverter. Uh, operator. So 0 becomes 1, 1 becomes 0, negative becomes positive, positive becomes negative, false becomes true, true becomes false. This is the inversion operator. So we have these three operators, AND, OR, and NOT, and we have two basic elements, 0 and 1, true and false, positive and negative. Right? I hope you see how this works. So why is Boolean algebra cool? Right? Uh, Boolean algebra represents a complete set of logical operations. And you can do logical operations with Boolean algebra. The inputs and outputs of Boolean algebraic expressions can always be reduced to a minimal set of two elements, namely 0 and 1. Uh, representing 0 and 1 in a machine, like uh, an electronic machine, is relatively straightforward. Therefore, 
A machine that can implement Boolean operations can theoretically reach any logical conclusion. Uh, and that's what our computers have been designed to do. So how does this work? In practice, ones and zeros are mapped to represent more abstract ideas like true or false, red or blue, chicken or fish. We, you know, human beings can't really understand zeros and ones in the way that computers understand zeros and ones. We actually use uh, a series of zeros and ones to represent the objects that we are used to dealing with. So, for example, um, the series of uh, zeros and ones, uh, zero one zero 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 zero. Uh, equals the capital letter A um, in a representation scheme called the ASCII scheme or the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. This is basically how we get letters uh, showing up on the computer screen, um, converting them from zeros and ones. But we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Let's, let's um, look at how transistors work first. To understand how transistors work, you need to understand how semiconductors work, what a semiconductor is. There's a great introduction to semiconductors. It'll only take you about five minutes to go over it. At this URL, computer.howstuffworks.com slash diode.htm. I recommend that you go pause the video and go take a look at that right now. Okay, welcome back. Um, so transistors are made with sem semiconductors, right? And transistors have three terminals known as the source, the gate, and the drain. Current flows from the source to the drain, but and voltage applied to the gate controls that current flow. In other words, if you uh, apply certain voltages to the gate, you can block or allow current to flow from the source to the drain. So the gate opens or closes to let the current, current through. So you can use transistors to build what we call logic gates. Right? A logic gate uh, is a device that implements one of our Boolean uh, algebra or one of our Boolean logic operations. There are two basic types of transistors. There are p-type transistors, and these can conduct voltage when uh, the input on the gate is zero. Uh, and then there are n-type transistors which conduct electricity when the voltage um, applied at the gate is uh, not zero and when it's positive. Okay, so let's take a look at how those get implemented in practice. Um, we can take multiple transistors and combine them to implement Boolean logical operations. And here's an example of a NOT gate, also known as an inverter. Uh, in this case, we use two transistors, right? We have an N-type transistor on the left and a P-type transistor on the right. Voltage uh, comes from a voltage source like a battery or you know the plug in the wall on the right hand side and it flows through this system to the ground. Okay, so cur uh, current in this case is trying to flow from the left to the right. Um, we also have an in terminal and an out terminal. Right? We can control the voltage on the in terminal and then we monitor the voltage on the out terminal. Right, so we're controlling it on the in terminal and we're monitoring the, the voltage on the out terminal uh, to make decisions. Right? Um, okay, so let's see what happens. If we have zero current on the in terminal, right? zero current on the in terminal means that our left hand N type transistor will be closed because N type transistors only conduct electricity when the voltage is non zero. But since this case it's zero, it's closed. On the other hand, the p-type uh, terminal on the right will conduct electricity because uh, it's open. All right, it's open when the terminal, uh, the, when the voltage on the gate coming from above, from the in terminal, uh, is zero. Um, what that means then is that there is a clear path for the current to travel from the voltage input on the right through the p-type gate and out the out terminal at the bottom. So when the in terminal is 0, the out terminal is 1. When the in terminal has no current, the out terminal has positive current flowing through it. However, if we switch this around and make the in terminal 1, then our p-type gate on the right closes and the n-type gate on the left opens. In this case, we have current flowing in on the in terminal, but rather than flowing all the way through to our out terminal, um, it flows out towards the ground. And so in this case, if the current coming in is positive, it will flow out through the ground and not through the out terminal, in which case the out terminal will be zero.
right? So if we have 0 coming in, 1 will go out. If we have 1 coming in, 0 will go out. Um, this is exactly as we expected to see in our uh, table, right, that we showed you earlier of our Boolean uh, operation for the inverter. Now, there's a symbol that we use in electrical di diagrams and drawings to, to indicate uh, the inversion operation. Um, it's called a knot gate, and it looks like this. It looks like a triangle um, with a circle on it, on a circle on one side of it. And we have the input coming from the left and the output going to the right. So zero coming in means one going out. This is known as a knot gate or an inverter. There are actually six basic types of logic gates, AND gates, OR gates, exclusive OR gates, N AND gates, N OR gates, and X NOR gates. Right? And I'm not going to go into the uh, how these all work here, but you can look these up on Wikipedia or lots of other websites. Um, but basically you can see these all implement a binary operation, uh, binary Boolean operation. So they need two inputs, and those would be the two wires coming in on the left, and they result in a single output, that would be the one wire going out on the right. Just to look at the, uh, the AND gate up top, you can see that you've got two wires coming in, and you only get current coming out if you have positive current coming in on both wires. That, that means that implements the AND operation. So you should take a while to study these and figure out exactly what they mean and how they work. You're going to be responsible for that. But what do you do with these gates, right? We still haven't figured out how these gates, um, you know, lead up to having a computer, right? Um, well, what you can do is gates can be wired together to do useful things. This picture here is what's known as a full adder, and we're going to explain how this works in a future video. Uh, but basically, this combination of gates and wires allows us to do addition uh, in binary, so to do binary addition. But uh, in, under, in order to understand that, you need to understand binary. So computer, before we talk about uh, binary um, explicitly, you need to understand uh, why computers use binary. Um, but to answer that question, I'm going to ask you another question. So why do, com why do humans count by tens? It's because we have 10 fingers, and therefore it's convenient for us to count by 10s, 10, 20, 30, right? That evolved naturally because of our, our biology. That's how our, our bodies were built. So why do computers count by 2s, 0s, and 1s, right? Why do they count by 2s? Because it's convenient. They have only two fingers, on, off, open, closed, high voltage, low voltage, 0, 1. Those are the ways that we represent information inside of a computer. Uh, and therefore, it's convenient for computers to use binary to do calculations. So you need to get to know binary. Um, if you don't know binary, here are a couple of places where you can look it up. Wikipedia has a pretty decent article on the binary numeral system. And the mathisfun.website also has a place to look at binary uh, digits. At a minimum, when you do these tutorials, you should be able to count in binary, add two binary numbers together, subtract two binaries, uh, and then understand the relationship between binary and hexadecimal notation. Um, and in that Wikipedia article, it, it explains why you'd want to know the difference um, between binary and hexadecimal. And you should be able to convert from binary to hexadecimal and vice versa. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about bits and binary. Computers represent information by the existence or absence of electrical current or voltage, i.e. they're on or off, or true or false, zero or one. Binary is a numbering system that makes it convenient to do calculations where you have two operators, right? or two, two elements, zero and one. Um, a binary digit, or bit, is the smallest unit of information that can be stored or manipulated by a computer. So now we're going to bridge the gap, and I'm going to try to get you to um, see if you can understand how um, a computer works. So if you really understand a computer, uh, how a computer works, you should be able to um, begin answering questions like, why aren't computers creative or intuitive? Or conversely, why did it take until 1996 for a computer like Deep Blue to beat Garry Kasparov, an international chess champion, uh, chess grandmaster, in chess? Right? That ha that actually happened. Right? IBM built this computer, Deep Blue. It beat Ka Garry Kasparov. Right? Well, why had a computer never beaten a grand champ chess champion before? 
um, but and why was it able to in 1996? Um, but if it can beat if it can beat a person in chess, why can't it you know write a new song or come up with a new movie or things like that? Right? Why are people better at creative and intuitive tasks um, than computers? Can you begin to see how a massive collection of simple but intricate intricately connected circuits could let you do fun stuff like World of War Warcraft or Instant Messenger, right? Are you beginning to understand how, you know, we're starting out with just a zero and a one and some basic logic gates, but if you put a whole bunch of them, if you put millions of those on a chip and you start, um, you know, building incrementally how the logic works, how you can get up to a very complex machine that can do actually really fantastic stuff um, very quickly. So um, also, will, you know, will your understanding allow you to better troubleshoot your machine the next time something goes wrong? If you can understand this based on what we've uh, covered so far, then you're really on your way to understanding uh, computers and programming and how, and how all this stuff works together to help us solve problems in the real world. Okay, in summary, right, again, I want to say it, I'm going to say it a hundred times, don't be intimidated by computers, right, they're, they're really, um, they're not that scary, and they're not, you know, conceptually, they're pretty simple, simple, simple beasts. When we get into the practical workings, um, you know, if you actually had to build a computer from scratch yourself, it might be tough, but um, for us, what we're doing, we're going to be able to use them as a tool, we're going to be very powerful, very much more powerful and effective doing that. Uh, it's not impossible to understand how computers are put together. Having even a basic grasp of core components inside a computer and how they're put together will greatly deepen your ability to manipulate computers and help you solve problems. Um, this is just the beginning. Uh, we're going to have a really exciting uh, semester and lots of fun stuff to do with this, so I hope you enjoy it.